Hello and welcome to another video by Perfect Scores. This is Preetinder Kaur. And in this video, we are going to discuss a very important topic of English grammar, which is articles. Now, articles are used very widely. And um, if you get articles wrong, it does impact the way uh, you have written your text a lot. So what are articles? Articles are basically uh, categorized into two groups. One is definite and one is indefinite. And in this video, we'll be covering the rules that govern the use of definite and indefinite articles both. So definite articles, it's actually only one article, which is the. And indefinite articles, there are two of them. A and an. And these are the articles that usually come before nouns. So that is one little rule that you need to remember. Now the a or the an is called an indefinite article because it usually leaves indefinite the person or the thing which is being referred to. So it does not specify a particular thing. For example, a doctor can refer to any doctor, but the doctor will refer to a particular doctor. That is why the is called the definite article. Let me put some examples here. The child is here. So we're talking about a specific child. But if you say a child is here, that means any one random child has come here. So this can refer to any child. This refers to a specific or in other words, a definite child. So let's look at when do you have to use which kind of article. Let's begin with the use of a and an. So let me select a pen here. All right. So when are a and an used? Now the choice between a and an is determined by sound, not by the letter. The sounds are of two types. You either have vowel sounds or you have consonant sounds. For example, the word apple begins with the sound of a, which is a vowel. So you're going to put an in front of it. Let's take another example, orange begins with the sound of O, again a vowel, so you're going to put an in front of it. Let's take another example. Our. Now in this case the H is silent and again we use the sound of A or O. So since it's a vowel sound we are going to put an. So remember, whenever you have vowel sounds, you always use an. Some other examples are an as, an enemy, an ink pad, an umbrella, an honest man. So all these are examples of the words or phrases that begin with a vowel sound. Let's take a few unusual um, kinds of words. For example, let me take the word European. Now European begins with E, but do you get the sound of E or do you get the sound of Y? you get the sound of a Y, European. So this is not a vowel sound. This actually comes under a consonant sound. So that is why you're going to say a European. And lots of other things. For example, balloon. Now you use the sound of B, which is a consonant. So you put a balloon. Let's say a uh, heater. Heater uses the sound of H. It begins with the H sound, which is a consonant. So you put a heater. 
So all you need to do is before a word beginning with a consonant sound, use a, and before a word beginning with a vowel sound, use an. That is a simple thing. Let's have a look at some um, strange or let's say unusual words or phrases. If I give you this phrase, one rupee note. Now it begins with O, but do you get the sound of O? No, you get the sound of V or W, V. One rupee note. Since it's a consonant sound, you're going to put a. Uh. Similarly, one eyed man. I saw a one eyed man or I saw an one eyed man. It begins with o, but the sound is again of w. A one eyed man. So you're going to put a uh, because it begins with the consonant sound of w. Now there are some native speakers who use an before the words that begin with H. For example, an hotel, which is absolutely wrong. It should be a hotel because the sound is of H. A historical book. Again, the sound is of a consonant, which is H. So you're going to put a in front of it. Now that's about the definite and indefinite article. Sorry, the indefinite articles. Now let's see in which cases do you have to use the definite article. So right now let's focus on when to use the definite article. All right. So the definite article is used in a lot of conditions. Let's keep noting them down one by one. When we talk about a particular person or a thing already mentioned earlier or mentioned earlier. For example, and when it's clear from the context that we are using uh, the to refer to something that was already mentioned. For example, did you see the memo today? So you're not referring to just any other memo, you're referring to a particular memo. Or the book that you wanted, or the book that you asked for is ready. Or the girl cried. Let's say the question was, what was that girl doing? The girl was crying. So you're using the to refer to something that was already mentioned. The second case, when a singular noun is used to represent an entire class. For example, the tiger is an endangered animal. So we're talking about the entire species, we're talking about all tigers. So the tiger is an endangered animal. Or the cat loves comfort. So you're not talking about only just one cat, you're talking about all cats in general. So you're using this singular noun, cat or tiger, to refer to an entire class. Or the horse is a noble animal, the rose is a sweet flower. So these two, these nouns, they can be used in a general sense also. And let's go to the next rule, which is the third rule of using the before proper nouns. For example, the Statue of Liberty. So that's the name of a particular tower or a statue. Or the Nile, the Thames, the Panama Canal, the Sahara Desert, the West Indies, the Bahamas, the Himalayas, the Alps, the Rockies, and some countries also. For example, the People's Republic of China, the United Kingdom, the Irish Republic. 
the Netherlands, the Ukraine. Then before names of certain books, before names of certain books, for example, the Bible or the Vedas, the Iliad, the Odyssey. Before names of things that are unique. Before names of things that are unique. For example, the earth. The earth revolves around the sun. The moon is a natural satellite of the earth. The sea rises. Sometimes we can also use them without uh, the er, uh, but usually we use them without with the the. Then the sixth one before a proper noun, especially when it is having an adjective. For example, the great Caesar or the holy city. With superlatives, that is the seventh condition. For example, the tallest boy. The cutest smile. The friendliest child. The most intelligent person. So when you use these superlatives, cutest, friendliest, tallest, most, in that case, you have to use the. Then the eighth case, when you have to use the, is with ordinals. Now, it's a little technical term. So let me tell you what ordinals mean. For example, when you give a rank to someone, he was the last person to arrive. Or I was the first person to arrive. What is the 51st term of this series? So you see these kind of questions a lot in maths. Uh, so before these numbers and ranks, always use the. Then the ninth case, before musical instruments. For example, I can play the flute. Do you know how to play the piano? Do you know how to play the guitar, the violin? So before musical instruments, you need to use the. The tenth case, before an adjective and the noun is understood. When the noun is understood. For example, the rich keep getting richer. Now you don't need to specify that we're talking about people because it's understood. So you can just say the rich keep getting richer, the poor keep getting poorer, the hungry, uh, the lamented, the sad, the happy. The eleventh case, when you have to use the, before a noun, that has some emphasis, to give the force of a superlative. For example, the verb is the word of a sentence. Or, he was the life of the party. So you're talking about these uh, 
normal nouns like word and life, but you're putting some added emphasis on these words in these particular sentences. So you don't have to use the word the in front of every uh, time that you write the word word or you write the word life. But only in these cases, when you put some kind of added extra emphasis on word and life or any other such example. There's also one more use left of the definite article which we need to cover. That is the twelfth condition. So I suggest you pause the video after every point, try to come up with examples on your own and then try to note down these uh, little points somewhere in um, on a computer or maybe in some kind of notebook. And the last case when we use the definite article the is as an adverb with comparatives. For example, the more, the better, or the higher, the larger, the more, the merrier. So in these cases, the is acting like an adverb and you're trying to compare two things, more, better, higher, larger. So those are the cases in which the indefinite article, sorry, the definite article the is used. Now let's hop on to the cases where the indefinite article a or an will be used. So the first case is in the original sense of the number one. For example, 12 inches make a foot or not a word was uttered. So you're talking about exactly one of a kind. The second case, when you're vaguely talking about certainty, That is when you use the indefinite article. For example, a John Doe is being targeted. So you do not know this person, but you just know the name of the person and that is being targeted. So you're using vaguely, but at the same time, you're certain that the name of the person is John Doe. Or one evening, uh, a laptop was found on the stairs. So you don't know what laptop was that, whose laptop was that, but you definitely know with certainty that it was a laptop. So that's how you're using um, the indefinite article a or an to refer to something vaguely but with, un but with certainty. Then let's look at the next reason when do you have to use the indefinite article. The third case is in the sense of any to single out a representative of a sample or a class. For example, a student must work hard. So you're talking about a sense of any student. So you're trying to say that any person who's a student must work hard. So you can just say a student must work hard. And the next case when you have to use the indefinite article to convert a proper noun into a common noun. For example, I'm trying to remember a and then you can put the name of a person. Let's say John. 
So let's say someone asks you a question. Did you know what John did? And then you say that I'm trying to remember a John because I don't remember which John are you talking about. All right. So the word John, which is actually a proper noun, is being used as a common noun to talk about all people who have the name John. So that's how when you convert from a proper noun into a common noun. So those were the examples and the cases in which you have to use the definite article the and the indefinite articles a and an.